Rob, uh, can you tell us first of all what led to the creation of Raspberry Pi? So we were looking to create a, a, an easy way in for people to learn about computer programming. Um, and this really came from an observation that people were coming to, to our university course perhaps with um, less skills than they used to have. And uh, when you first set out on this journey, what were your goals? I think the, the primary goal was to build um, a low-cost computer that every child could own. Um, and one that where programming it was the natural thing to do with it. And also something that could be built into larger, uh, larger projects. Um, I think one of the great things about Raspberry Pi is its form factor. The fact that it's small, the fact that it can be run off um, uh, a couple of AA cells means that it can be built into a, a robot um, or used um, in some sort of home automation project. Yeah. Um, so exciting projects that would perhaps broaden the interest in computer science and electronics amongst children. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Harriet, you've been passionate over the years about the need to promote interest by young people in science, technology mm -hmm. and engineering. How do you see your company helping with this process in connection with Raspberry Pi? I think we've had a, a mission for a long time to try and get more and more young people excited about technology, whether it's engineering, whether it's uh, uh, computer sciences at a young age, our Element 14 community, lots of innovation and user groups, sponsorship at universities. It's part of how we create, I think, the engineers of the future. Looking at the situation that led you, inspired you to create Raspberry Pi, I mean, what were the problems with, with coding and programming and so on that had, had evolved, do you think? I think that some of the problems were that uh, probably come naturally from the fact that computers became easier to use. It wasn't the, when you, when you bought a computer and brought it home, there was no immediate need to program it. Um, and also perhaps the, the, the lack of um, good computing courses at school as well. Mm. Yeah. I think that's been a big issue. Hopefully the government are going to rectify that soon. Yes, and so that uh, uh, computer science at an in entry level of GCSE that's right. is going to be brought back into the curriculum. And I think that's going to be such fun. Uh, 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 for people, as you've said before, getting this finished product has yeah. turned us all into consumers, as opposed to sort of people saying, wow, what could we do with this? Absolutely. How will it work? I mean, you must have been one of the original Sinclair guys. <laughs> I wasn't a Sinclair guy. But <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the thing to, to, my hope is that at least some children will realize that with a little bit of experience on how to, how to program, a little bit, hopefully some electronics experience as well, that that is an incredibly powerful and creative set of skills. Mm -hmm. And that um, it, for me, growing up, it was the best uh, Lego set that I could possibly have had. A limitless um, toolkit for building whatever I imagined. Mm -hmm. um, but I think unless you understand what, a little bit about programming, you just don't appreciate mm -hmm. what you can build um, and what you can do with, with a computer. Yeah, like both your views on this, view from sort of outside looking in to some extent, I mean, it's clearly struck a chord why do you think it has had such a major impact? I think that uh, communities of today, the community work that we've had at Raspberry Pi, the community work of Element 14, you can get thousands of interested parties to play a part in the development, in the sharing, in the views. I think people are looking for identities and communities and things to be part mm. of. And so much better this then 70 million people, uh, worlds at war or whatever, you know, destruction game is the, is the one of the moment. So I think it's about people wanting to be a part of something where they'll learn and then can share and show off a bit yes. that I know this and what do you think about that? Engineers have very high egos, I've always found. <laughs> yes, I, absolutely. I think what we've found is people want to learn and they just want a, an easy way in to be able to do that, a way to start. Yes. Um, I think there's also a, a huge number of hackers and makers with projects on the drawing board and that, that are enabled by Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. a low cost, powerful computer that's small and low power. And I think uh, it's amazing really there hasn't been something as powerful as Raspberry Pi um, available to them uh, in the past. And, I think the, and the most memorable branding. I mean, what a great name. <laughs> you know, left to their own devices, you probably would have called it X472-1, but Raspberry <laughs> Pi is inspired. We love it. So what made Elephant 14 want to be part of this project? I, I think it, it fits into all of our strategic goals in terms of bringing more uh, technologists into, into the fold, into the frame. It's very global. So Element 14 community will help Raspberry Pi reach 
hundreds of countries uh, where people can share. We've got the universal translator, so language doesn't need to be uh, a problem. Uh, we, we are always featuring innovation. We've got the Element 14 Lives Innovation Series. And this just hits all of those sweet spots. And they're great guys, and so it's easy to work with them too. How important is Raspberry Pi to you know, Element 14 and other communities, do you think? I think constantly we need to be showcasing the amazing talent that we have uh, in different countries, particularly in the UK, and to show how this can enable other innovations in other places. So for us, it's very key. It's a sort of pride issue. Look at all that talent out there and look at how it connects with other people. So for us, it's very key. Yeah, I, think, I think it's important to realize that really Raspberry Pi is the community's platform. I think from the very start, we were commu communicating with the community and they've had a huge impact on what we've actually produced. Uh, and I think there is a feeling, am uh, rightly so, amongst the community that it's their platform. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, we've just, um, you know, we, we've just helped put it in place. So what's the future for Raspberry Pi, uh, Rob? How far are you looking ahead right now? So I think we've got a, a very exciting year ahead. I'm, I'm very excited about getting the, the next um, uh, 20 or 30,000 boards out to the developers and see what they will do with them. Um, they're an incredibly creative bunch uh, uh, and um, I'm just really excited to see what, what they'll actually do with the, with the boards and what projects they'll create. Um, as the year develops, we'll obviously be looking towards our educational release um, towards the end of the year mm -hmm. and it'd be great to get it in the hands of school children um, to create the material that I think will be needed to support those new GCSEs as well or at least create some of the material that can support the syllabus, the new syllabus. Yeah. And how important is Raspberry Pi for Element 14? It's very important. I think it's another example of brilliant innovation that we want to share globally, uh, uh, tell many parts of the world. I mean, the great thing about a community is you can inform all parts of society uh, about how this has positive uh, impact, and that's part of our mission. Yeah. And so will you be taking one to your next meeting of the Prime Minister's Business Advisory Group? I will indeed. I will be citing it as another example of brilliant innovation uh, here in this country which can affect global design, global development and global manufacture. And hey, all of those things move companies and countries out of contraction into growth. So I certainly will be doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you.